y'all, Loctar here, coming at you tonight with another review from samples that have been given to me by the amazing community that we are a part of. Uh, special shout out to RJ the Fed and to Night Method, both of whom provided me with samples. This unlabeled ginormous bottle, uh, ginormous is a technical term, look it up, it's real, okay? Just take my word for it or look it up, up to you. This is Natter Jack Irish Whiskey. I have not been able to try any Irish whiskeys yet, um, so I'm very excited to get to try this one, being that my name is Patrick Kelly, K-E-L-L-E-Y. Uh, very Irish. Very Irish indeed. And I'm looking forward to trying something from my heritage. So, excited for this one. RJ also sent me a pin. I had a uh, I won this sample and the pin. And I'm not sure if you all can see it. It says Natterjack on it. Big toad. Um, and a t-shirt during uh, one of his horse races. So if you haven't subscribed to RJ's channel, make sure that you do so. It's uh, RJ the Fed. And I'll put a, uh, I'll try to put that up here on the screen so you all can see it. Uh, as well as Night Method. I don't think he posts any videos, but yeah, you can just go subscribe anyways in case he ever starts. Uh, he's got quite a selection. Uh, that's where I got a lot of these samples from. Most of these review videos that I have done so far have come from Night Method's generosity. Uh, so make sure to go and support him. Appreciate what you all are doing here. And uh, I'm very much looking forward to... Uh, RJ is sending me more samples of other bottles that I've been looking for and things that I've wanted to try. Um, and so is Drizzo. Drizzo, last night we did a live. If you haven't seen that, I did share the post, uh, but it's on Drizzo's page. It's at Drizzo41. Um, a lot of good information on both of those pages. God, guns, bourbon, you name it. We're Texans. Guns are part of our religion. Sorry. Um, this is uh, going to be a fun night, to say the least. It's been a heck of a day. I have had quite a fun day. Uh, my wife... Uh, came home this morning, decided it's my day off. Let's go bourbon hunting. She actually suggested it to me. Never happens. She spent the day sitting in the truck or going into liquor stores with me. Uh, we actually went back to the same one twice. Uh, the second time that I went in there, I was taking pictures for uh, Dr. Vader, which Old Fashioned Ways Plus Plus, if you haven't subscribed to him, please go check out his channel. He does a lot of cocktails where I'm doing a lot of neat um, reviews and reviewing things that um, aren't mixed with anything because I'm trying to figure out flavor profiles and, and what I enjoy. He's doing a lot of cocktails. He did a, uh, a special chocolate one the other day, and I think he just posted a video about um, Easter cocktails, the perfect Easter cocktail. So make sure you go check out his videos, leave a like, comment, and subscribe for these guys as well. Um, there's a lot of people out there that are doing some pretty amazing things in our community. And if you're not a part of it, it's because you're not speaking up. It's the first thing I'm going to tell you. Get into the Discord. Start talking with these guys. They're amazing. Really and truly, they are amazing. Uh, you're going to get good information. You get in good with them. You start sharing you know, your thoughts on different drinks and what you're finding in your city with people who are around you. You're going to find people who are willing to share pours with you. Um, and who want to be around you, really. That's uh, it's pretty amazing. So if you're not getting samples right now like I am, if you're not uh, engaging with the community, that's why. Um, make sure that you're adding something worthwhile to the community. And I guarantee you, it will come back to you tenfold, hundredfold. Uh, I'm expecting quite a few samples right now, and I'm very excited about it. I was able to not purchase some bottles today, that I found that I really wanted to try because I know I've got stuff on the way. Um, so I get to try these before I waste my money, well, or spend my money, I should say. I don't know if it'll be a waste until I try these bourbons or these whiskeys. But that's, uh, that's a huge advantage of knowing people, of getting to know people, of making friends, of the generosity that is being shown. Uh, for instance, Life on the Patio. If you haven't subscribed to those guys, go check out their channel. They crack me up. I've got a big Razorback hog on the uh, on the bar in their little setup there. Uh, they're sending me a couple of samples, and I'm going to send them back some Rebecca Creek Double Spanish Oaked because they can't find it. I have actually set aside 
a good portion of this and stopped drinking it so that I could make sure they get some of this in order for them to, to all be able to sample it. I know they've got three or four guys that are normally on there. So I'm going to send them enough that everybody gets to enjoy my favorite dessert pour. Uh, I live right by the distillery. I'm hoping I will have the money to go get another bottle here soon because it is a limited release, but that is beside the point. Okay, so I've stalled enough. I'm sorry. I don't plan what I'm going to say, and I don't know if you can tell that or not. Uh, I tend to wing it. I do that on purpose because I think you get some more interesting things out of it than if I tried to plan everything. But I do need to get this into a glass so that I can start letting it breathe and start swirling it around. I'm going to do the Natterjack sample first because I don't know if y'all saw it, but if you look at the Discord, um, right outside my apartment, when my Natterjack got delivered, there was a huge rainbow. I mean, just crystal clear. You can see the entire thing in the picture that I posted. I'm Irish. Natterjack gets delivered, and all of a sudden there's a rainbow in the sky, and the storm starts to clear up. I think I'm supposed to start with the Natterjack. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to use my Maverick Distilling Uniquely Shaped Glen for the Natterjack. And I've got my other Glen available for the Weller Special Reserve once I finish with this one. By the way, um, I know I've shouted out a lot of channels, a lot of different things. Uh, another one that I need to talk about is Major Zero. Um, and Zero with an X. X-E-R-O. I'll put it up on the, uh, the screen as well. He just got a house, so celebrating with him and his wife... That's a big thing for every family when they finally get into their own home. He's building a bar right now. Everything's progressing. They're getting moved in. So he's not posting as many videos, but there's still a ton of content on his page. Bourbon hunting videos in uh, Tennessee. I'm not sure which city he's in specifically, but there's a lot of good information on his page. He talks about the things that are going on in his life. He does some reviews. He does uh, some pretty interesting things. He did a, a collaboration at one of the distilleries with um, Bruzel, showed up with them. He's done some uh, some lottery videos and things like that. Just, just go check these guys out. You know, they're, they're all major portions of why I'm able to do what I'm doing right now, why I'm able to give the tasting notes that I'm giving. Um, now, that has a lot to do with me being a foodie. I have a lot of documented things in my brain as far as flavor profiles go, and I can make connections. My goal with this channel is to help people who are new to bourbon not be afraid to try different things. A lot of us are like me. You find something you like, and you just stick with what you like. I have found with bourbon, there's a lot of different things that I like, the same way that it is with food. Now, there are staple foods that I go back to all the time. Uh, a, a classic grilled cheese, for instance. After my live with Drizzo last night, I'm not used to doing three one-ounce pours of anything. And I not only drank from my Infinity bottle, but I had 1792 full proof, which is 125 proof. And then I also had a pour of, um, what did I drink? Eagle Rare. I was pretty plastered last night, so I made a grilled cheese after... Uh, after uh, having those pours and we were talking on the discord and just just having a good time afterwards but those staple foods those are the things that you go back to and you're gonna find as you explore different bourbons and different different flavor profiles and types of whiskeys that you will find a a steady one that you really enjoy the one that you keep going back to um every other day or more than once a week, that kind of thing. Um, for me, it has been my favorite pour, which is the Rebecca Creek, but my daily sipper, the one that I'm reaching for just to have something is honestly the 1920. So the old Forester 1920 tastes like cherry candy to me. I absolutely love that one. It's easily found not a limited release like the Rebecca Creek is. So the Rebecca Creek has become more of a special occasion type deal. I'm still drinking it once a week because I have no self-control when it comes to that, but <laughs> it's, uh, it's very good. And the 1920, since I know I can always replenish that, why not have that on a more regular basis? It's 115 proof. It's delicious. Yeah. 
Now, both of the ones that I am trying tonight, this Natterjack, this Natterjack comes in at 40% alcohol by volume, which makes it 80 proof. Um, 80 proof is not high proof. It's very low proof. It's very mild. And what I can tell you just from sitting here looking at it, it's the color is very light compared to some of the older and darker bourbons that I have behind me. Extremely light. And yet, that's hitting my nostrils kind of hard. Interesting. So it smells, smells like vanilla. But just not straight vanilla. It's kind of like Oh, how do I connect this for you all? If you took vanilla extract, peeled an orange, and put the vanilla extract on the outside of the orange, not the peel, but the orange itself. Because you know when you open up an orange, that orange smell just kind of permeates everything. That oil starts getting released, and it, it kind of fills, it covers your fingers, that kind of smell. Matter of fact, I don't know why I smell my fingers. I have no, I don't actually have orange on my fingers, but I had this whole vision going in my head. Yep, so forget pouring it on the orange. If you were to just have vanilla on your fingers, like if you got vanilla extract on your fingers while cooking, and then peeled an orange, that's the smell that I'm getting from this. It's, it's straight citrus which may be why it kind of stings the nostrils. And then that vanilla, it's pretty light. The more that I smell this, the, the more that it, it changes. I just spilled some. I haven't even had a drink yet, y'all. <laughs> this is going to be an interesting video, to say the least. Ugh. Now my chair is going to smell like alcohol. Yeah, who cares? Yeah. I don't know if I can detect anything else on the nose, though. Like, there's... What is that? You know what? I know what it is. So it smells kind of like the cinnamon, that hint of cinnamon that I was getting on the Old Weller Antique. And it, it hits the nostrils. And to me, I always associate that with alcohol initially. Normally I have to taste it to kind of get that cinnamon coming through. But I think the more that I am trying these styles of whiskey that have that cinnamon note in them, I'm starting to pick it out even more. Because I that's definitely cinnamon. I can tell that now. So... You've got cinnamon, the vanilla, and that orange, which is not a bad combination. Don't get me wrong. It's interesting, though, from something this light. So, time to taste it. Cheers. Whew. Okay. For 80 proof, that's a pretty strong... Wow. That's a pretty strong alcohol taste. Um, unlike the 1792 full proof, which I did yesterday and the day before, um, which I didn't get the burn until I swallowed it. With this one, it kind of hits your tongue immediately. It's, it's the cinnamon. The cinnamon comes through immediately on the flavor profile. It's got a strange mouthfeel for me. 
kind of like when you drink milk. I think is the, I think that's the best association that I can make with this. How how milk kind of in inside your mouth it kind of coats and lingers, but it's got that cinnamon stuck on it, so it's kind of spicy, which is weird to me. What else is that? So I keep having flashbacks to the Jack Daniels 10 year. And I know I didn't like that one, but the my mind is making this association between the Jack Daniels 10 year and this one on the finish because it's it's like that tobacco note. Not like not like the Jack Daniels 10 year where I said it was like licking a wallet and then the tobacco on the finish. It's more like just tobacco almost like you're in a room you're not smoking a cigar but somebody is and the way it kind of hits your palate it's a light smoked tobacco is the best way that i can describe that and then there's something there's something else there what is it So second sip, I get a lot more of the tobacco. That cinnamon's lingering. It's still the same mouthfeel. The kick was less. That's to be expected because it's supposed to numb your tongue. I'm not getting any citrus on the palate, though. And that's strange because it does smell, and it still smells like orange. That orange, that vanilla, that cinnamon. But on the flavor, all that I can pick up, a light vanilla, very light, almost non-existent, kind of like um, LaCroix, those waters, how they uh, they say a flavor on them, and really all they did was they opened, or they, they stored the fruit they claim is in this next to where the water was. That's what their flavor profile should say. You know, transported next to bananas, transported next to limes. That's what should be on the can for LaCroix. This is very light vanilla. No citrus on the taste for me. And again, I'm new to this. Forgive me. I don't get any of the caramel. You can smell some caramel on it. Um... Maybe I'm just smelling sweetness, and that's what my brain is associating with the caramel. But you can smell the orange, you just can't taste it. It's really a lot of cinnamon, that light vanilla, and then that tobacco finish. Which, I, I have to say, I am not a fan of tobacco finishes. The Jack Daniels 10 year, it was extremely off-putting for me with the leather and the tobacco. This is so light, and don't get me wrong, yes, the, the finish on the tobacco is kind of strong, but it's not as off-putting. I don't know how else to say that. I don't know what else to equate that to. It's, you can tell it's there, you can definitely taste it, but it's not as bad. I was trying to think of a better word than bad to use for this. But this is not something that I don't think I think I would purchase. I, I don't think I would purchase this one. I don't think this is something that I would drink on a regular basis. And it's mainly because of that tobacco finish. Now, I poured a small sample here. I'm going to take another sip and see if it changes. Because first and second sip, cinnamon, tobacco, I hope there's more to this. I really wanted this to be good.
Okay, third sip. This took a little while. Third sip, I got the orange. It came forward, meaning like when it first hit my tongue, that was when I started tasting the orange for the first time. I still get the cinnamon, that light vanilla, and the tobacco finish, but at least I could pinpoint a little bit of the orange flavor that is in this. But this being such a light whiskey, this being so low proof, for it to hit my throat, and I mean, I'm still feeling it after every sip. You can feel that, um, what Bourbon Hall calls the, uh, the Kentucky hug. I can feel it going down with each one. And I've been drinking higher proof bourbons and whiskeys the last few days, and those don't do that to me. It's weird that I can drink higher proof stuff that has a different feel all the way around and more flavor. So yeah, I'm picking out a few different things, but that tobacco is kind of off-putting for me. Uh, it's unfortunate. It smells very good. I don't get any of the tobacco on the nose. I do still get a lot of that cinnamon and the orange. It's an interesting pour. I I wouldn't be mad if I went over to somebody's house and they offered me a pour of this. I mean, of course I would drink it. It's not terrible. It's not bad. It's a good pour. Just not what I'm enjoying at this time. I think is the best way that I could review this particular one. Now, I'm gonna set that aside. I'll finish it here in a little bit. Oops, I'm gonna put the cap back on this one. Just because I don't wanna waste it. That was awesome. Thank you, RJ, for that. I'm sorry that I did not enjoy it, but I think if, uh, if I'm going to do review videos, I firmly believe I should be honest. And even though that's a favorite pour of a lot of people, even though it's something that RJ was kind of raving about and talking about how good it was. It's not for my palate at this time. Now, this is again, Weller Special Reserve. Shout out to Night Method for this particular sample and all the other three that he sent me. I've finished those other ones already. I'm excited for this one because I loved Old Weller Antique 107. That was delicious. So the bar has been set pretty high for Weller products. Um, what I will say is that I need to cleanse my palate actually. So I've been drinking that Natter Jack. Um, Weller Special Reserve is a little bit higher proof than the Natter Jack. This is instead of 40% alcohol by volume, this is 45%, so 90 proof instead of 80 proof. Um, hopefully that makes a difference. I can tell you the oiliness is much more significant. Um, this is kind of clinging to the inside of the glass and you see a lot of legs running off of it um, a lot more than what was happening with the Natter Jack. So that alone has me pretty excited for this one. On the nose, there's a lot less burn on this. This smells so sweet. It's, it's higher proof than the Natter Jack, but there is no noticeable burn on the nose at all. It does smell kind of bland. And I, I apologize for that review. I know Weller Special Reserve holds a special place in a lot of people's hearts. This is my first time that I'm getting to taste this. But when I say bland, of course I'm comparing this to higher proof bourbons uh, things that I have tried that have much more complex noses and different flavor profiles. Even the Natter Jack, I, I got a lot out of that nose. It was much more significant versus this one, which is just sweet, like a bag of sugar and some caramel. I don't get any vanilla. It just smells like straight caramel.
which by the way, that's all caramel is. Um, it's sugar that's been heated and combined with butter. That's how you make caramel, just FYI. It's not that hard. So if you had, you're making caramel and you have a bag of sugar open next to you, like sugar in the raw, not that processed white cane sugar, but like a, a, a clumped brown sugar, excuse me, a clumped brown sugar and caramel. That's what I'm smelling. Now, let's see how complex the taste is though. I'm hoping that the taste is a little more complex than what this is smelling like. Interesting. It's, it's kind of one note for me. All I taste is caramel. There is not a noticeable burn, which makes this better to me than Buffalo Trace. This makes this better than a lot of the other one note whiskeys that I have tried or one note bourbons that I have tried. It is extremely, extremely smooth. This is not something that I would pass up. I would love to have a bottle of this. I found it for $27 uh, today at MSRP's $26.99 for the, the 750 milliliter. Uh, it's the first time I've actually spotted it in San Antonio. I would not mind having this as a daily pour as long as I could get it and as long as I could have it at MSRP. There's nothing to hate. There's nothing to give you a harsh note. There's no tobacco. There's no leather. It really is just super sweet caramel. Super sweet caramel. It's not bad at all. This is delicious, but again, it is, it's a one note bourbon. Those are not my favorites. My favorites are the ones that have those complex flavors that I really need to pick apart. Um, that's all I taste is caramel. Even on that second taste, I just, I will say I could reach for this on a daily basis. There, I see nothing wrong with doing that. Maybe we could take the caramel a little deeper. So like that third taste, I'm getting a little bit of a butter on the finish. So maybe instead of caramel, I should describe this as like a butterscotch. Maybe that's a more accurate description. Caramel on the nose. I don't really get any of the butter notes, but a little bit of butter on the finish. And definitely like those, those Werther candy butterscotches. That's, that's what that tastes like. Would I buy it? Absolutely. As long as I could find it at MSRP, I am not mad at this bottle. This is something that I could definitely keep in stock and enjoy on a regular basis. And this would be an excellent entry-level bourbon. If this would have been the first bourbon I tried, I probably would have just stuck with it because it's that smooth. Literally no burn. It doesn't even smell like what you would expect a whiskey to smell like. There's, It doesn't hit the nostrils the way that that Natter Jack did. And maybe it's because I had the Natter Jack first. That is entirely possible. I have been wrong before, and I'm sure it'll happen again. But I get no burn off of this. And it's, it's 10 proof higher than the Natter Jack was. But I got so much more complex flavor out of the Natter Jack between the two, honestly, I'd probably still rather have this one, even though that had more flavor. Just because that finish, the tobacco was so off-putting for me. But 
I also did quit smoking in 2010. So it's been a while since I've been somebody who enjoyed a cigarette or a cigar or anything along those lines. And that could be why that tobacco note is so off-putting for me. If you enjoy a cigar, you may enjoy that. That's up to you. That's why you have to try everything. That's why you have to figure out what you like in a bourbon. And listening to crazy guys like me who turn on their camera and talk to it as if you're actually sitting there in the moment, it helps. Don't get me wrong. I do the same thing with all the guys that I mentioned already. Um, but you really have to go out and try these because you never know what you're actually going to enjoy. You may enjoy different foods than I do. You may enjoy different whiskeys and bourbons than I do. And that is okay. And keep in mind also, when I first started out, I drank everything iced because that killed the burn for me. And I didn't want the burn. It took me time to open up to understanding what an oily, high-proof bourbon can really and truly do for your palate. Um, you get a lot more complex flavor profiles out of the higher-proof stuff. It gives you more depth. It lingers longer on the tongue. But if you enjoy it iced, drink it iced. Don't listen to anybody else. If you like it with, with whiskey stones that are frozen, do it. If you like it in a chilled glass, do it. The best way to enjoy your bourbon is how you enjoy your bourbon. Don't force yourself to drink it neat if that's not how you enjoy drinking it. You paid for it. Drink it how you want to. And don't let anybody on the internet tell you otherwise. It's that simple. Between the two, again, Weller Special Reserve, I think, is the winner between Natterjack and the, uh, the Weller Special Reserve. Between everything that I own... This could easily become my top daily sipper. Um, I will probably end up adding a bottle to my collection. However, I have got to stick with this being my absolute favorite pour. This Rebecca Creek Double Spanish Oak. My bottle is 124 proof even. And it is delicious. But I love coffee. I love pecan. Like pecan pie. Sweet pecan. Candy pecans. And I love dark chocolate. And that's exactly what this gives me as far as flavor profile. Yeah, it'll kick you in the back of the throat. That first sip is going to hurt. But it's like that song. It hurts so good. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. It helps me out in ways that you do not understand. Uh, I'm only at 55 subscribers right now, but again, cheers to every one of you who have already hit that like, who have already hit that subscribe, who comment on my videos. You guys are amazing. Um, I don't think I shouted them out yet, but I wanted to make sure I did uh, for Whiskey Shaman also. The guy's a level three sommelier. His content is amazing. If you haven't watched his stuff, you need to. Um, I was trying to convince my wife to purchase a $30 bottle of Devil's River because they have a coffee bourbon because of what he did on his reviews. So make sure that you check that stuff out and uh, y'all have a great night. Cheers.